Good morning, church. Welcome you today. Beautiful day out there. Call to worship from Psalm 24. It says, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty, He is the King of glory. Let's stand together. Let's welcome King Jesus into the house this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus, we welcome you into this place today. We thank you that you love to be with your people. And Lord, as you, Lord, enter our service in a special way by your spirit this morning. Lord, we pray that you would be lifted high on our praises today. Lord, that you would smile down upon this gathering and Lord, you would bless it with a special touch from heaven today. Lord, I'd ask that each person that is here will experience the rich and real presence of your spirit in this place. That every person listening online, Lord, would experience that same presence. Lord, we thank you. You are not a respecter of persons. Lord, you're not limited by space and time. So Lord, you can reach them all. So we'll receive the praises of your people this morning. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Nice to see everybody's happy faces. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. The presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Cause death is defeated, the king is alive. Verse 2 I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roar. Well, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Cause death is defeated, the king is alive. I'm gonna sing. Here we go. Well, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes. Hope will arise, cause death is defeated, the king is alive, the king is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. It's amazing how things kind of change for us when we start focusing on Jesus and not on ourselves. We focus on Him, His greatness, the wonder of who He is. Things begin to change. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Priest in us we pray. There I we were made. This is my prayer. Set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls holy spirit come 
invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives. You're our joy and prize To see the captive's hearts released The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace We lay down our lives for heaven's cause We are your church We pray revive this earth Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. Verse 3, unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of Christ. church we are the hope on earth build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom, here we pray, we pray, we pray. Hallelujah, praise you Lord, praise you Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to go to prayer in a minute. But I want you to understand that anything you ask of God is not beyond his ability. Absolutely nothing is beyond his ability. He can change lives. He can transform people. He can heal bodies. He can do anything. He's the creator. He can do whatever he wants. And we're going to talk to this Jesus who is our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. I want you to understand that he personally wants to be in your life. He wants to talk to you in your sleep. He wants to talk to you when you're laying on your couch or when you're driving or when you're struggling with something. He wants to talk to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Verse 2. Here we go. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Don't be discouraged. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we
Can we find a friend so faithful? Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Here we go. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with a load of care. Beautiful singing. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise you? Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised, thou wilt all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Here's a promise. Soon in glory, bright unclouded, there will be no need for prayer. Rapture, praise, and endless worship. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. Verse 4 again. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised, thou wilt all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory, bright, unclad. We'll see him face to face. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion then. Amen. As uh, Patrick said, we're going to the Lord in prayer right now. As uh, most of you are probably aware, um, the Ron family. Um, unexpectedly uh, lost um, her husband and father, uh, Irwin, on Tuesday, passed away, and we had the funeral here on Friday. And uh, they need our prayers this morning, so let's uh, intercede for them today. And of course, all of you as well, and the burdens that you are carrying, the things that you are bearing right now, the intention is that you would never carry these things alone or bear them by yourself. Uh, Jesus is interceding before the Father right now on your behalf. And as well as the body of Christ, we are to bear one another's burdens. And so one of the ways that we do that, there's practical ways and uh, also prayer, which is also a very practical and powerful way that we can help our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's just agree together this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this, this vehicle, this, this avenue. Lord, it would seem, Lord, to those in the world, what is that? Prayer. They don't understand the power. They don't understand the privilege that we have. That we can come to you, lay our burdens at your feet. And Lord, you help lift those burdens. Lord, you carry them. Lord, you answer prayer. Lord, you do things that nobody else can do. So, Lord, we bring before you the Rons, this dear family right now. Lord, who are grieving. 
Lord, they don't grieve as others who have no hope. But Lord, still there is a hurt. There is a, a missing piece in their lives right now as Erwin has gone to be with you. So Lord, right now we'd ask that you would surround them. Lord, the picture in scripture is, Lord, you are like a, a mother bird that wraps your wings around us. So Lord, wrap your loving arms around them right now. Strengthen them, help them, love them, dear God. Lord, help us in any way that we can to, uh, Lord, just be an encouragement to them in these days and weeks, months and years ahead. Help us to truly be the body of Christ. Lord, for others that have come into this place this morning who are listening online, and there is a heaviness, Lord, because of the burden they are bearing. Lord, because of the situation, the circumstances in their lives. But we thank you that you are not a God that's, uh, Lord, just far off. You are very near to each one of us. So, Lord, whatever is needed in these situations, Lord, we call on you. And Pat said it earlier, there is nothing too difficult for you. There is nothing that you cannot do. So, Lord, in need of, of healing or finances, provision, direction, wisdom, Lord, you are the great I am. And so we release these things to you today. And Lord, ask for supernatural help in the name of Jesus, flowing from your throne, Lord, to your children's homes. And Lord, we thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for your care, our loving Heavenly Father, for your children. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. A couple of quick announcements today. Just a reminder, Bible study continues Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock. We're continuing in the New Testament challenge, so please feel free to come out and join us Wednesday night at 7. As well, next Sunday after the service, we are having, uh, we're calling it a Chinese Food Fellowship. It is at China House in Wallaceburg after the service. And so I do have to make a reservation this week, so if you haven't, um, sign the sheet and you'd like to come, uh, just write down your name and let us know how many people will be attending. Uh, as well, you'll notice at the back, there are these baby bottles and they are there because um, Pat and Heather are expecting Holly. No, they're not. <laughs> it's, it's called the Baby Bottle Boomerang and we are raising funds for the Refuge Pregnancy Center. And so the idea is that you would Take this home with you. We started it last week, so it was from Mother's Day to Father's Day. And in between that time, fill this up with your change and then bring it back on Father's Day and we will send it out to the Refuge Pregnancy Center to help them. Reminder that the offering plate is at the back. We appreciate your giving each and every week. You can get by email transfer as well to evangelchurch at belnet.ca. We'll let you remain seated as we continue to worship this morning. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. God is real. Praise you, Lord. I don't want to just sing songs this morning. It's, it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful to sing songs in praise. But if this is only just a song to you, it means nothing. I'm not trying to break this out or stop anything, but I want you to understand, this is more than words. This is the truth. There is something about our God. There is something about his presence. There is something about his word, about his power that is way, way more than you could ever imagine. There is something about his ability to save souls and to set people free. And we can get so caught up with just singing the songs and just kind of playing along and it sounds nice and it's really melodious and it's fun and, and I have fun with it. It's, a lot of, it's good singing. But there is something about God and I want you to understand that this morning when you are singing this song you are praying to someone who is bigger who's mighty who's powerful and he is here this morning whether you feel him or not he is here and his presence is here and he's going to move in this place and I want you to trust him this morning so we're gonna sing verse 3 and we're gonna trust him that he is here you are here Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. You're mending every heart. Mending every heart. Sing it, girls. I worship you. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Last time. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Sometimes it seems like we just kind of sing a bunch of different songs, but I believe that this morning there's a purpose for all of this. God is calling you this morning to step out. To step out from the safety of the shore to move into something greater. Maybe to put your faith in Him in a greater way than you've ever done before. He's calling you he will be your way maker. But he's calling you to step out. To walk with him. To trust in him. 
Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, for feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep. Sing it. My faith will stand. I will call upon your name. I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours. You are mine. Your grace abounds. Here we go. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. For feet may fail and fear surrounds me. You've never failed. You won't start call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans arise my soul will rest in your embrace I am yours you are mine. spirit lead me where my trust is without borders me walk on the waters wherever you would call me take me deeper than my feet could ever wander my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever want to My faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders Me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander My faith would be made stronger In the presence of my Savior I will call upon your names And keep my eyes above the waves Notions rise, my soul will rest, your embrace. I am yours, you are mine. For I am yours, you are Last time. mine. Thank you, Jesus, for your call on our lives to walk in faith. Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's amazing what goes through your mind sometimes as you're worshiping. And I was looking at the background of that song and that big, huge wave, and I saw myself on a surfboard. And <laughs> I was... Just think, you know, the, the things that God calls us to, they're really kind of neat adventures. And um, they can be quite enjoyable. Yeah, they, they have their, their trials and their challenges, but there is no life like it. You may even wipe out a few times, 
but you get up and you go again. Amen. It's probably sermon in there somewhere. Maybe that surfboard is his grace or something. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> amen. Follow the Lord. It's quite an adventure. Let's get our Bibles out this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's say it together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never, never, never. I will never be the same, in Jesus' name, amen. My message this morning is entitled, The Lord is There. It's a wonderful promise for us. Um, how many of you remember the classic children's book, Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss? Remember that one? Um, the whole book is about a guy named Sam, and he, he tries to get another chap to try green eggs and ham. And this other guy, he turns Sam's offer to try them, he turns it down every time and in every place because he's adamant. He does not like green eggs and ham. And to get Sam to go away, he finally concedes to try them. And I quote the conclusion of the matter. Say, I like green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam, I am. And I would eat them in a boat, and I would eat them with a goat, and I will eat them in a train, and in the rain, and in a tree. They are so good, you see. So I will eat them in a box, and I will eat them with a fox, and I will eat them in a house, and I will eat them with a mouse, and I will eat them here and there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you. Sam, I am. <laughs> now, the main point of my sermon this morning, it sounds like a line that is taken from Dr. Seuss's book. And I don't intend to be juvenile this morning, but just easy to remember. So here it is. God is there. He is here. He is everywhere. Amen. I want to share with you uh, the meaning of one of the names of God. So today's focus will be on the name Jehovah Shammah, which means the Lord is there. And this name is found in only one portion of Scripture, but the, the concept is really found throughout the entire Bible. So Ezekiel 48.35 is where we find it. It says, and from that day, the name of the city will be the Lord is there. Now, I'll share a little background with you to help you uh, put this verse in context. The children of Israel were in captivity. Jeremiah prophesied that, that they would be held captive for 70 years. They had heard from Ezekiel how the glory of the Lord had departed from the temple. And in this chapter, we read of a, a future temple that would be built. Many believe this will be the temple that Christ will rule from, when he returns to the earth. The promise in the name Jehovah Shammah is that God would reside with his people forever. Never again would they be separated from him through discipline. Forever they would live as God's people and he would be their God. This city, it would be characterized by the presence of God. It is the essentially a prophecy about the promise of God's abiding presence. In their darkest hour, they were reminded that God is there, He is here, He is everywhere. Amen. It was a message of encouragement to those in captivity. It assured, those, uh, it, it assured them that they had a future and it gave them a hope. And so those are, those are two things that every human being desperately needs. We need a future and we need a hope. For the most part, uh, we like to live for today, and I get that. Seize the day, we're told. Make the most of today because we are not promised tomorrow. It's all good advice, uh, but not if it neglects tomorrow. 
It's not good advice if it causes us to take no thought of eternity. For those who live for Christ, it gives them hope not only for this world, but also for the world to come. One of the overriding plots of Scripture is that God wants to be with His children. He created earth to be a place where He could be in community with His people. He no longer only wanted to enjoy the, the perfect community um, that He had as the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He wanted to share that experience with us. So God was there in Eden with Adam and Eve. He would walk and He would talk with them in, in that magnificent garden setting. They came to know the personal presence of God. God showed the Israelites that he was with them when they traveled through the wilderness. Exodus 13, 21 says, He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. His presence was represented as a, a glory cloud that settled over the tabernacle whenever they made camp. And the Ark of the Covenant would later become this, this physical sign of the Lord's presence. It reminded them that he was there. Ezekiel shared the vision God had given him. And in that vision, he, he watched as the glory of God lifted off the city and it settled on a mountain to the east. It was a time of great despair for the people. They longed for the time when they would once again know him as Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. I want to show you something in Matthew 1, 23. You'll recognize this verse. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God with us. With the coming of Jesus Christ, God was there again. Jesus is Jehovah Shammah. He is better than a pillar of cloud or fire. His glorious presence is better than a, a cloud that rested over the tabernacle. The Ark of the Covenant could never offer what Jesus did by his coming. The whole concept of the Lord is there. It doesn't end with Christ's coming. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure, he told them that he would not leave them alone. And we read in John 14, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. He promised to be there with them through the Holy Spirit. Now God was there with them wherever they went and whatever they were going through. One of the greatest needs in life is to tune into God and to understand the value of His presence. I want to suggest to you four common conditions in life where we need to sense God's presence. Number one, when I am worried, I need to sense God's presence because God is my confidence. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, it reassures us, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, catch this, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. When we're worried, God is our confidence. His confidence keeps us calm. Secondly, when I am lonely, I need to know God's presence because he is my companion. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 gives us this promise. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. Loneliness can come in, in so many forms. There's the loneliness that's caused from the death of a loved one. There's the loneliness of divorce. There's the loneliness of a, a business trip. There's the loneliness of going to a new school. There's the loneliness of growing old or feeling like nobody understands you. There's even the loneliness of success. It can be lonely at the top. God never asked us to do anything by ourselves. He is there. When we're lonely, his presence cheers us up. Thirdly, when I am tempted, I need to know he's there. 
because God is my counselor. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us that temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Amen. When we are tempted, God's presence helps us out. He knows the struggles we are going through, and he's already preparing an escape route because he is there. God is always there. He is always watching, and when we are tempted, he is our counselor. Number four, when I am discouraged, I need to know God is there because he is my comforter during those times. Psalm 34, 18 encourages us with this reminder. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. When you are discouraged, when you feel defeated, when you feel like nobody cares, that's when you need to recognize God's presence in your life. When you are discouraged, his presence will comfort you. So on top of all of this, Jehovah Shammah is preparing a place for us. When Jesus announced to his disciples that he was leaving them, he told them that he was getting a place ready for them. In John 14, 3, he promised, And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. There is a time coming when we will be in his presence, literally. John 17, 24 records Jesus' prayer to his father. He says, Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. So Ezekiel's prophecy will ultimately be fulfilled uh, when the new Jerusalem is filled with the redeemed. This scene is breathtaking in its beauty and it's described for us in Revelation 21. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. Amen. To see the ultimate fulfillment of Jehovah Shammah, just drop down to the end of this chapter, verses 22 and 23. It says, I saw no temple in the city. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. What a beautiful promise. Are we aware of God's presence in our lives? The reality is that, that God is always with us, but we, we need to recognize that in our everyday lives. One of the first truths that we need to grasp is that God is omnipresent. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 and 24, it says, Am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? No, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth, says the Lord? And so scripture is very clear about the fact that, that God is omnipresent. That is one of the attributes of God, uh, meaning that God is everywhere, all surrounding, without exception, in every place, at every time. He is everywhere at once. You say, well, that blows my mind. Well, he's God, right? <laughs> Unlike us, God is everywhere all the time, and he is not limited to time and space like we are. The prophet Jeremiah's words are, are not a random reflection about God. It is a truth about God that we can stand on. God's omnipresence means that he sees us and that he knows us and that he's with us and that he will never, ever leave us. It is a very practical truth because the greater our awareness is of his presence, the more we live in a healthy fear of God but we are also conscious 
of his loving care each and every moment of each and every day. Amen. We learn to go through our day with God, uh, abiding in him moment by moment, no matter where we are, because we know that he is present everywhere. We are more likely to find it a natural thing to constantly keep praying and talking to God because he's always there with us. If we look at Psalm uh, chapter 139, there are some verses that speak to God's omnipresence. Uh, David mentions some of the places that he might go only to discover that God is there. Listen to what he said. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. See, the, the knowledge of God's presence was something that comforted David. He knew that God would be with him everywhere. For the believer, God's omnipresence is a tremendous comfort. Katrina, he's with you in the pickle factory. He is everywhere. God is imminent. He is, he is present within his creation. He is near to us, fully present in, in time and space. It can be said he is both far and near. This God who must stay separate from us because of our sin and his holiness chooses to draw near to us through Christ who broke down the barrier of separation. Right. The God who holds uh, all things together chooses to be ever present with his adopted children. In Jesus, we live and we move and we have our being, the scripture says. And in Acts, it says, the Lord is not far from us. We also receive guidance and provision through his indwelling spirit. How wondrous that, that God inhabits the expanse of eternity, but he also chooses to dwell with a certain kind of person. God desires to revive the one who is lowly in spirit, the, the one who comes to him with a contrite heart, admitting utter dependence on him. The Lord longs for people to seek and know and love and obey and worship and serve him. For people who are grateful for his grace and his mercy. Because of Jesus, the omnipresent God dwells in us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Author and pastor John Piper wrote, he says, The presence of God's Spirit in my life was bought by the blood of Jesus. The wonderful truth for the believer is God will be with us always, even to the end of the age. Amen. God sees everything. He knows everything. Allow his presence to encourage you today. So I'd like to close today by making 10 statements that I would like you to respond to audibly by saying the main point of my message. God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. All right, so let's start. When you feel alone, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When a close friendship comes to an end, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you get bad news from the doctor, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When your child makes bad decisions, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you wonder why you hurt so bad, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you feel like hurting yourself, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you're tempted to do something wrong, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you make a mistake, God is there, he is here, he is everywhere. When you can't pay the bills, God is there, he is here. He is everywhere. When you're afraid about the future, God is there. He is here. He is everywhere. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth from your word. Lord, this reality that you are Jehovah Shammah. You are the God who is there. We thank you that you are the God who is there to forgive. 
And Lord, if there's someone here today and they need to experience your salvation, Lord, you are there to forgive them. Because Jesus, you died for their sin on that cross. You said, anyone who comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. Lord, if someone be in this place or listening online, Lord, assure them by your spirit right now, Lord, you are there to forgive them. If they would just express faith in Jesus Christ and repent of their sin, Lord, they can start a new life. Lord, they can personally experience the presence of God and your spirit there in them personally. God, as your children today, we thank you that you are there in every situation and in every circumstance. You are there for the good and the bad and everything in between. And Lord, we pray today that you would help us to become more aware of your presence. As we walk with you and talk with you each day, Lord, may we see you Lord, in the sunrise and the sunset. May we see you in the conversations and lives of those that we encounter. Lord, may we see you in, Lord, every situation and circumstance that life brings our way. And Lord, may we have this wonderful hope and future knowing that Jehovah Shammah is there. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Lord, thank you for your promise today. We receive it with gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together in worship. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory Nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord sing it church Holy Spirit you are welcome
your presence, Lord. Let us be more aware. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Last time. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you, keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you leave this place today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome, dear. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be over